it's, I mean, that was the same case with Mirage. Mm. And look how that ended up. It wasn't even close in the end. So let's just say Anonymo have to make this T side work if they're going to get themselves off to a better start. They've got to shake off the, uh, the vibes from last map. Heavy presence towards outside here. Snatch, he's going to just stream across the roof here. Pank's in some trouble. Unless he hits some shots and he's good for three. Are you kidding? That third shot was ridiculous right across the yard. And Kyla, mate, you're probably in trouble. I'd just be sending it through halls if I were you, mate. Zevi going to be able to shoot that from behind. However, it drills in to steal it. Kyla able to at least find some redemption for his fallen teammates. But on 19 HP, you're really not backing Kyla in the one on three. Not with the Glock, unfortunately. Tried to get himself something better. But thanks to Pank, he is up against it. Maybe it's Pank's giving instead. Let's see if Kyla... And secure the round. Probably going to have to drop the ace to make it work. He's at least got time on his side. 40 seconds to decide where he wants to head. And, oh, unfortunately, he's going to lose that. His head. Reels in long range. Gets himself a second for the round. Him and Pank teaming up to get that first round on the board for Sharks. Oh, this, this is where things just fall apart. Show it to me again. Oh, oh. The, the fact that it was that first shot, little micro flick, crazy readjustment. Pank is probably one of my new favorite players right now. From what we've seen from him today, he's just so great to watch. The stream update there. Sprout have tied the series after an overtime win against Endpoint, so they're heading to a third. Oh. So we head into our second round. In our third map. All the smokes outside means it's not a moat. Cross the secret, although there is no secret that they are there. Good smoke from Pank to just stop any progression from Anonimo. Buys him time to reposition. He's gone up to the old clock. Not behind default. Waiting for a push in through double doors. Anonimo, they are going to commit in through the halls. Speeding it up as well, trying to beat those rotations. Tank only good for one with the A1S. Reels are going to be dropping down to dark, and that's going to be two rifles retrievable. Anonimo in a very good position to make this round work now. JNT's got some damage too, as Luke is still alive. He's a danger man. Always seems to find the frags at the worst possible moment for the mm -hmm. team. However, Snatchy now has control of the doors. So he's oh. even harassing the CTs as they stream into the bomb site. It's getting a little bit awkward for both the CTs. JNT close range, but he's damn low. He's trying to find something. Bomb in a solid position. Snatchy, he's fallen, but that could be an A1 retrievable. Kyla says he doesn't even need the damn thing, and he's just going to be playing for the tap. Almost makes it work. Good chip damage. Count the time. He's going to be peeking out last damn second. No Perfectly played from Anonimo, from your boy Kyla, to get a first round on the board for the T's. Zebby is able to retain the M4, but everybody else is just feeling the pain. So, good work. Snatchy. Yeah. Really just uh, digging in. Once he picked up that M4, gained position as well. Allowed them to group up and play around the doors. And he set up Kyla quite nicely in that one versus one. Was able to take JNT down. Forced by coming through from Sharks. With Zebby still holding on to what he could. Mm. So, timeout coming out now from Nonimo. Talking through, uh, you know, are they going to come up against the buy? I don't think I've ever really seen a third round timeout, to be honest. Yeah. Not, not terribly common. It seems they just wanted that extra second or two to discuss what was going on. Uh, of course, calling it as the clock hit zero. Give yourself the extra 40 seconds or so just to discuss where you want to be sent in the, on a round like this. Big round. Snack should be able to pick up that A1S at the end of it. Uh, AK, rather. Just juggling all the guns around. Mm. And Sharks will arguably have a very good buy going into this, considering it's nuke. You position these deagles appropriately, and you can get yourself those three taps with some long-range headshots. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see with them on those buy 
a heavy presence towards outside, but I mean, they're sending nobody there. They've got the Mac 10s in. They're going to try to make this work. There's a good trade there from Snacks, but he needs to clear the angle. JNT sprays. He digs in. Not good enough for his frag. And they're going to fight their way onto the top site. Pank finds two through that. Zevi, the danger man from last round. Ooh. He's got the A1S to play with here. Innocent. He's worried about door, but as the smoke faded, the time is perfect. However, close oh, range. Oh, oh, oh. Two tap for Innocent. To lock down a second for Anonymo. It was a big play. You could see Sharks read that Anonymo were going to go for the faster approach. There was four mollies utilized within the first five seconds of the damn round. But Anonymo, they went out off the back of it, stayed close enough to trade, got full control. Yeah, and this is where Sharks now really can't invest anything. There's no investment from them. They are just going to have to be at the mercy of Anonymo. Anonymo, though, they're not messing around. There's no SMGs for that extra kill bonus. Mm. They're expecting something more sinister from Sharks. There's a lineup outside. I've seen <laughs> this a few times. It's a bit dirty. I love it. It's yeah. actually the greatest little it's, angle. It's funny because it's very Virtus Pro. The old Virtus Pro, the Polish Virtus Pro, mm. had these lineups. Just like that. So, Snacks may have encountered this one before. Used to do it on the older version of Nuke. Quite threatening. And uh, Cobble. On that mid-ramp. Let's see. If and when. <laughs> and <laughs> It's Snacks of all people to maybe walk into it. But he's coming oh. in from the other way. Reels it. Spotting that flank. And I think he's spotted two. Saw some feet on that head. Snatchy. Get himself a little bit of redemption. AK in hand, but it's dropped. And Snatchy doing good work. Eking up all the ecos. Eking up? Eating up. That's the one. As we are going to see Anonymo traverse into three rounds in the bag on the T side. Solid start to nuke, all things considered. And Sharks, not quite the start that they would have been hoping for. Certainly not after winning the pistol after some handy work from Pank, but back on to the rifles. And uh, we do have another player, Luca, on that M4A4. Mm. They were discussing it on the desk. So I'm add another one to the stats there, but very rarely seen. I did note, he was playing with it earlier in the series. Didn't have too good of a map on Vertigo, so I didn't point it out too much, but Last map, he was pretty much farming with the AK for the most part. Zevi was a nasty line. Over from the top of blue there. Luca oh. trying to boost up the heaven, but they made so much noise, they just cancelled it instead. Yeah, tried to go to heaven, but he went the other way. He went down. <laughs> if only anyone watching would understand that <laughs> reference. But, uh, alas, maybe it'll have to wait for the next land. Now, Snatchy looking to contact here at Outers. Leading the charge with the big green. Sneaking into secret. And Sharks. Looks like they're all relatively towards the top side of the Ooh. map. So B-Site should be free. Kyla late lurking in through lobby. Gonna be a hard couple of CTs for him to get past. So even if Anonymo do manage to control this bottom site, they're coming in through decon. And that's gonna make it so much harder. Just to lock down the side Ooh, unless Reelsen's okay. caught in transition. And just like that, the opening they were looking for. Yeah, they send straight into the bomb site for that frag. Now Zevi is going to be caught on the flank. Okay. And this is starting to look interesting now because there's a little bit of doubt in the rotations from Sharks. Have to filter through these horses. Oh. Oh, here we go. Big damage onto Pank, who's... Already down to 21 HP. Luca coming in late from Decon. Finds a headshot onto Snatchy. And it's Kyla again looking to win this one on two. But they're already trying to reel in the defuse. But the full flank comes through a little too late, though. But there's no kit Close. in play. He wouldn't be sticking it if he didn't have it, surely. No! He's missed it! And there you have it. Beautifully played from Anonymo. Obviously not noticing no. the Sharks didn't have the kit. But no kit, no clue, and no round. Anonymo, three-round lead now, thanking their lucky stars. Dear mate.
He gets away with two HP. Mm. That is... I think that's a little bit frantic at that point, but... Anonymo rolling on. There's only that AK of Luca. So, just keen to see where they position that. Looks to be in top site, so... This is where Anonymo just starts to Ooh. flex their muscle a little bit in terms of that weaponry. They're going to take the jewels outside. Look at this swing from Luca. Is going to come through. Kyla eliminates him. So, things are falling apart here with sharks. Okay. This is at ladder base somehow. Just rapping. Going hard in the paint. Rapping on them. They're doing so much work here all throughout us. JNC. Going to be able to get any work done with the AK he retrieved. Now it's just reels in a one on five. You wouldn't back him on a good day. And Anonymo have an idea of where he plays. So you got Snacks just fully locking down. Uh, any chance of him going back towards the upper side of the map? Mm. Taking a moment to no doubt Sharks are trying to discuss what is going to happen in the next round. He does have a flash. He does have a deagle. So either of those can be useful for them. Mm -hmm. Bomb's only just gone down too, so... If you thought this was a nervous wait already, extended by another 30 seconds now. And Sharks have not had any answers on CT side thus far. As we said, this is the decider. One of these two teams is going home after this. This is the lower bracket of uh, the conference stage of ESL Pro League. So, I don't know. Sharks are going to have to get a wriggle on. Mm. Get a few more rounds in their, uh, in their corner. But, I mean, there's not really too much to break down for Sharks right now. They're just being shot to pieces. And Anonimo are doing a really good job of actually varying the tempo on this T side. They've tried quite a few different things. We've had everything come out from Anonimo in sort of these first six rounds. Let's see what the seventh produces. But... Anonymo are coming into this on their T side with a very varied approach. Just going to have a quick look at the stats and see how Sharks usually do on their T sides of Nuke. Looks like, yeah, still more CT side than not. So you're probably going to be hoping for them to pick up more towards the eight or nine round mark if they want to succeed here. They're going to have so to dig far. in. Yeah, it's uh, already gone in very much the wrong direction. But this is a good place to change that momentum. Panks actually going over the top. He's found two wow. that quickly. This man, a master of the rifle. He's having a great series and he's already set them up nicely. And it's three versus five as the smokes are about to fade. Rallon has gone through, so there is a trade. They do have control of ladder base. So Anonymo have some territory to work with. And... Mm. Kyle has now found another, so three versus five quickly becomes a 3v3. I do like the position there. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say Reels and JNT, lucky to be alive. Rather than unable to shoot accurately there on the ladder. Couldn't thread the needle. And the a man out looking just to target that A site, but... Sharks, they're all towards the upper side of the map, and JNT is going to fall, so it's very rough now for Luca to try to hold from this default position. Reels and looking to find the time. Inaccuracy is there for the A1, so might have just saved the round, but he's not going to have the accuracy to shoot at that range. Reels and it's not enough for him. Kyler comes in with that late trade, getting the info of the Heaven player. And Anonymo string six together on the T side of Nuke. Whoa. It's getting into danger territory already for Sharks. Yeah, you can't burn a three versus five player advantage like that. They had the two picks thanks to Pank early on. But what they weren't accounting for was the advanced positioning of Rallon, who then went on to just harass ladder base entirely. Mm. And it just fell to pieces from Sharks. Their rotations onto that top site were cut to pieces. Rallon already has picked up a nice early brag onto Pank, who has been a real danger for them. And, I mean, he, he's, re he's really shot ahead 
in terms of his performance already. Yeah. But he needs the rest of Sharks to, to come to the party right now. Another rough round for Sharks in terms of the bite. It's these pistols, and they're in relatively good position to use said pistols, but unfortunately... Anonimo not going to be walking into any of these close range positions yet. However, Zevi can definitely fire up when called upon. And this might be one of those rounds, but he's gone wide and spotted. Anonimo all nice and close, able to trade if necessary. But it makes it that much harder for Zevi to multi-frag just with that 5-7. They're down to the lower side. They go in. It's looking to lead the charge. Luca can't get too much done with the Deagle. 5-7 to follow. But Kyla holds his ground. And he is having a spectacular performance on Nuke already. 12-4 and four after a relatively quiet morning. Chalk and cheese, though. The performance for Sharks on this map compared to their last. Yeah. Really not performing at that same level as, you know, some key performers here who aren't just performing to what we saw. Luca, Zevi, mm. big mid-round impact they were having. The Sharks, they were hammering heads, if you will. But this map, very quiet. I haven't seen an AWP on Zevi that's been effective. And Luca just seems to be shut out. Well, Shark's going to need a nurse to try to aid them back into the game. It's going to take a while now as Anonimo lock down a seventh round in a row. I guess, you know, silver lining, I would like to see what Luca can do in that second half. We saw how annoying and how much of a nuisance he was on Mirage, just finding those holes in the CT defense. And this is a map for that as well. Nuke has so many different angles, so many different routes you can take to get in behind enemy lines. A bit more verticality here on Nuke. Mm. Economy track, <laughs> big downward trend for the CT side. Mm. But the buy coming through now with Zebi on that orb is probably going to be their best chance in a few rounds. J and T also very quiet, so. As we were alluding to, Sharks need to really start locking down some of these bomb sites. They're losing a lot of these opening jewels. I mean, Rallin is just beating out a lot of the utility outside. And mm. I don't know. This is a very well-drilled Anonimo on this T side. They do have quite a big variation. They're also quite good in layering some of that utility and just allowing, you know, players to get into position and funnily enough they might not be winning some of these opening duels but it's the positioning that they are getting into that the spacing that some of these early pieces of utility set pieces are providing mm. it's actually setting them up for these mid-round explosion pank in a good information gathering position there just under silo we eventually go for a late outers push if necessary. We do see Anonimo going very deep into spawn. Someone seems to have left some util. Get their mitts back on that one and throw the late outers smokes. I swear no one checks that line that Pank is holding. The amount of times we've seen people not check it and yeah. meet their end. Oh, and this is going to be another one. Rowan does check it, mind you, but the shadow advantage is just too strong. Snacks up on Silo. Solid position to trade, not allowing Pank to get away scot-free with that aggressive position. Oh, Zebby no. missed opportunity there, and he's gotten off the line, allowing Snatch to take it, and he's picked up another kill as well. Reels it. A lot of work for this man to do if he wants a chance in the round, but he's already edging in towards CT spawn, and that's where he's going to go to save. It's going to be a long 30 seconds for him too. If you are anonymo. He is sending out the search party, trying to take this weapon out of their hands. Yes, the loss bonus is right up there. But they lose this this weapon mm. and things get difficult because it's not just the weapon. It's the armor. It's the utility. It's the kit. So they are slowly searching, but he should be able to hold on to this. However, what they are losing grip of, Sharks, is that CT side advantage on Nuke. Yeah, look, I'm just having a 
deeper look at the stats here for Sharks on Nuke. A deep and dive, if you will. Yeah, they don't really have a huge amount of success when they do it against um, some other relative tier uh, Brazilian teams. There's only one European team I've, I can see here that they played against and they lost 13-16. That was against uh, Indy Array, which I believe is Base Crack's team, uh, one of the newer iterations. And that didn't go well for them. So we're going up against Anonymous and we know that the Poles can play a very good nuke. They're trying to actually go faster here towards the A side. It isn't coming in. There's no flashes. It's dry. You had oh. the CTs ready and waiting, but it hasn't worked out at all. Luca only able to find a single kill before the rest of the boys all got mopped up and Sharks already on the back foot looking to save. This is what I was talking about. The speed variation coming out from Anonimo. They're not just playing rounds that are similar. I mean, there's old, the old adage, right? If it's not broke, don't fix it. But... How unpredictable are Anonymo right now? Mm. They're just varying that tempo. They're throwing fast strats, throwing the slower strategy. They're just playing contact. They're making things very, very difficult for Sharks to adjust and anticip anticipate what's going on. And I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on to their weapons. This is where Anonymo, they're going to throw caution into the wind, of course, to ensure that the bomb will go off first. But anything they can take out of the CT economy is gold. Hank again. Oh, he's going to be spotted. Chipped away at down to 20 HP. He's far enough away not to dive the bomb. But we'll see if he can survive at the corner. No. Commits to looking to his left as Rylan peaks. And it's only one rifle saved for Sharks there. So Anonimo not only just getting round after round after round and stacking on the pressure, but stacking on the financial pressure as well. Just keeping everything as costly as possible. All these rounds where Sharks are losing, they're keeping max like one weapon alive. Mm. Interesting point with Snatchy going down to the bomb. Yeah, he had 14k, mm. but had to rebuy down to the 7k mark. So, I don't know. That might be a factor later on if Sharks do stabilize. But, I don't know. I haven't seen any signs of life from them that would suggest they've been able or will be able to deal with what Anonymo are doing on their T side. They're just... They're really just keeping Sharks guessing. It's hard to make adjustments when your opposition... Uh, almost two steps ahead of you. Mm. Well, eight round lead. Not am I looking to make it nine? To jump on into the double digits. Nice and early here on you. Sharks again with another Buy of sorts as Raal, and he's picking up the pace, looking to make his way straight into secret, but it's going to be a two for one trade. Luca able to at least find one there up from heaven. Oh, he's not going to be gifted a second just yet. Someone was just <laughs> stuck on a weird surf angle. It was that was Snacks being sneaky. He's managed to make his way into Annex. Rylan. Oh. View model in the way. Does not spot Luca there. He's going deep into CT. Looking to cause some more damage, maybe. Something's going on. I can hear some things being typed. Again, though, how... Off tempo was that from Anonymo. Yeah, they went straight into what they did last round, which was that faster, early rush onto top. However, they went outside dry. Yeah. Knowing that Sharks were probably going to try and put their forces towards top site. And then it just became a shooting gallery. Sharks realized they were in trouble here okay. as Wilson gives them a chance. Back of that two on two snacks, able to trade, and there's a molly to heaven. Luca, let's <laughs> see. Uh, Luca's rather position is known after dropping that smoke, and the man is not giving himself any chance in this one on two already. Look at just a wrap around. He's making a world of noise though, up on that wall. So the tease where that he could be in this position, Kyler though, mm. caught with his pants down. There is some time, but there is no kit either. So looks like Luca very focused on just getting an AWP alive for the next round. But even with that, even with all these kills, all this damage, that is 10 rounds on the T side in this current meta for an Otomo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a big hill for Sharks to climb. Yep. Jim, Sharks don't have legs. No. No. They are terrible runners. This might be, unfortunately for Sharks, the finale. Mm-hmm. Might just have to be sleeping with the fishes. And it looks like Anonymo are not going to stop the pressure just yet. 
what I thought it was going to be a faster approach, but there's mollies going both ways. Things down. Early smoke outside of it. Squeaky. Making it look like there was some form of vent drop attempt coming through. But even so, they're just trying to thin hit that util from Sharks because there's not a lot of money to purchase that util round after round. It's going to be a couple of flashes out and the T's go straight through that smoke. But two drop, unspotted initially. And the CT's not quite rotating just yet. No, Innocent was the sacrificial lamb. Mm. And I mean, Zevi's just trying to check out what's happened. Oh, sharp from him. Might be stepped here as well, Snacks Ooh. chooses not to. He has no idea Snacks is in the vent, but Snacks also locked into lowers with the bomb. And Zevi's here. Nice micro adjustment from Snacks. Looking down to find that headshot. Oh, no. Snatchy bringing it back, and it's a three on five. Brought to a three on three. Rylan as well, just trying to wait for a vent drop to come through. Sneaky here at Squeaky, and oh, that's a freebie. Knows that one more CT's gone down, so oh, that position is known, no. and it's another round, Anonimo. How have they managed to make that one look so easy from the two-man deficit? Another 3v5 that they've lost. You just got to be ropeable if you're Sharks right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Anonimo are setting this, this net. Yeah. <laughs> And unfortunately, sharks are swimming right into it. Well, into round 13 we go. And sharks, they look like they've got a bit of a sad expression on their faces. Not quite as happy as they were on Mirage. Understandably so. As Anonimo, cold as ice, cold as steel. Doing every single damn thing right here on Nuke. Coming back from the deficits. Making all the right moves up against these anti-ecos. And not dropping the ball in rounds that are important. Oh, Zevi. He's thinking about it. And he's managed to snag a timing, but Innocent's coming right back. The line close to the corner means Zevi gets the advantage there. Rylan already wrapping in from heaven. But Zevi's feeling it now. He knows that Sharks have to do something. So he's got that AK in hand and he's looking to lead the charge. But Anonimo also charging down to that lower side. Yeah, they've got some utility. And I say some as in single smoke on Zevi. So do they go for this? Do they... Just try and save what they've got. They haven't had a lot of success in these sort of scenarios anyway. Mm. So maybe just to hold on to what they have is the best choice. And I mean, Zevi has been quite quiet this map. Really haven't seen the same level of performance we saw on Mirage. Yeah. And look at the result. Anonimo are just streaking away now. 12 and 1. And I'm not seeing anything to suggest that sharks are going to be able to stop them. Well, six alive at the end and sharks happy just to keep two AKs alive into the next. But again, oh, look at the top of the screen. Jim, tell me, 11 rounds in the lead, Anonimo, mm. on a T side of Nuke. I, I would have said, yes, there's a chance for Sharks, maybe a couple of patches ago, a couple of metas ago, uh, maybe a year and a half ago or so. But times change. And I just, I want to get on a comeback bandwagon because you know me, I do love a good underdog story. But at the moment, I think it's just a little bit too far gone. As I've said that, look, Anonimo, they've lost two players, picked up one of their own. But who's this? It's Innocent just sneaking in down the vent. I don't think Panks actually spotted no. those feet either. Snacks is going to follow. They may have heard it, though. The bomb, fortunately, does drop down the vent as Kyla gets caught. So I would suspect the Sharks have this inkling as to where Anonimo might be. You can see the rotation coming through from ramp. So there's a firing squad going to be faced at Megaton. Mm. Snacks is the only one that's currently in position to be able to do so. He gets back to decon, so they're going to have to try and defend this bomb from the back of vents. But mm. the late lurk coming through. They should 
definitely be able to get this pick up onto JNT. Innocent, still thinking about it. But they have no info on it. Great flash from Snacks to enable it, and JNT can't get away with the thing. Still only two kills, but Snacks again here at Decon. Nice off angle oh, up on no. the wall, and they've left it too late. Sharks, they're not going to be able to get onto this one in time. There's a little oh, no. bit of coverage, but Snacks doesn't even need to open the door to make this one happen. Time hits zero, and Anonymo with another 13 and 1. With a 13 to 2 half at best, Sharks. Their lives here in ESL Pro League are on the line. And they could be booking their tickets back to Brazil shortly. That is case in point. Sharks have a 4 to 2 advantage. They don't win. We've seen two rounds that are 3v5 that Anonymo have managed to pull out of the fire. Yeah. And unfortunately... Sharks may be a little bit toothless. However, well. Pank reels this one back. I mean, Anonymo, the damage is done. They've just sped into this round. And Sharks, they've changed it up perfectly, you know. Uh, sending the few players towards outers. Not worried about that A-site bust this time. And the drive push does not work at all. So, Sharks, final round of the half. They do double the rounds on the board. At least that's something to look forward to. And we've got a second half to get to. But before it, time for a break. Swimming upstream is pretty damn hard, especially when you're a shark and you need a little bit of salt water stuck in the river, looking to climb a mountain. They don't have feet. We already established that one, Jim, and they don't have much damn hope here in the second half. But something that could sweeten the deal would be a nice little pistol 
to put the right foot forward for Sharks because Anonimo are absolutely blasting them out of the water. Absolutely devastating uh, from Anonimo. Sharks, they didn't have any answers. The last round was just, in all honesty, Anonimo just running into choke points. There wasn't anything special about what they were doing. They were just trying to play maybe a little bit too silly. Mm. But let's just see whether or not this is the turning of the tide for Sharks as they get onto that T side. They need to try and fashion themselves a pistol win and roll on from there. But they are set up here. As, oh, Kyle has just pushed all the way through ramp and he's actually disrupting what they're trying to set up here on this T side. It's a great start to oh, the man. round. Snatchy though. Sharp shot. Good tracking into the smoke there. <laughs> JNT. Oh, he's always just putting himself in a very rough position. And he's had the roughest game we've seen here at the conference. Rowland shuts down the round. And now, if it wasn't already bad for Sharks, it's looking like it could be a very short second half. Anonimo, you got Snatchy insta-buying into the A1S. Couple of MP9s for Snacks and Innocent. Just getting that util through. Famuses for Rowland and Kyla. And Sharks have... No real other option than buy in now. Try to bring this one the whole way back. Tech 9 Pain Train. They're going to steam on through to the squeaky. Okay. No, they've, they've held up. Innocent is going to have a field day. They choose to run through, but the backing off. The cancellation has been made. This did work a lot for Anonimo, at least over earlier on Vertigo, you know, just cancelling those strats, uh, smashing it back to the other side of the map. Sharks, you got Luca jumping across the line. That one's being communicated, but there's the two-man set up here from Anonimo. It's a solid crossfire with Snatchy, just tucked into the corner at boxes. Kyla up on the wall, and even though he's jumping through bank, it's not going to be enough of a distraction as Luca finds yes one, but Innocent's going to be pushing the pressure into Lobby. Can Lucas save the day again? He's found himself that second kill for the round, but Snacks is still here, and he stops the drop for one and a second, and Anonimo. They've got 13 match points to play with. They have everything going their way. They've had the run of play in the first half, and the second half is pretty much exactly the same. And Sharks, they're out of touch. They're out of time. They've got... Only pistols to play with in this round. Mm. <laughs> They're almost out of Pro League. <laughs> See, I'd be out of my head if you're not around, Mac. Well, Rush Util coming through for Sharks. No one going in through the doors. Snacks is going to stand there and be the bouncer that Anonimo need to make sure no one uh, sneaks into the club. Just low key, I would not be trying to chance my hand at Snacks the bouncer. He's a formidable man. Now, Rowland, let's see how the timing goes for him. Pank, he's going to look the right direction and finish okay. off what he started. Can he get his mitts onto the A1? He can. Extendo arms. Pass across to Luca now, who wants to try to go for the trade. But Snatchy stands and delivers. He looked at his map for a moment. And he can't be. He was not able to pick up that second kill. So, still on a 3v3. Sharks finding something. Oh. There it is. Zevi with the timing out towards A. But the other two, they're trying to escape away to take the path of least resistance. But Snacks wraps around and says no. Zevi able to at least find one. And the trade comes through. The game is not done just yet. Luca gets his 19th kill in a third round for Sharks. Now, question is, how serious do Anonimo take this? Do they feel as though... They just have the run of play, and they're going to buy into this by the look of it. Max Evan comes out on snacks, so looking to finish it in style. Mm. But, as you said, they had 13 match points to play with. They're now down to 12. Oh, damn. I know. This could be a spirited comeback from Sharks. It just takes one round, though, you know, to change the momentum. To change the spark, you know, light that fire in the Brazilians. And Luca playing a dangerous off angle. A nice entry. That's exactly what you want to see. Sharks are to get back in the game here. 
rotation approach. Again, this is similar to what we saw from Sharks uh, earlier on Vertigo. I think it was also Anonymo doing very similar things. You know, very good spacing. So no matter when someone died, there was always that ability to uh, for someone to swing in. Go for those early rotation snacks though. Gonna be swinging around. He somehow uh -oh, got in behind enemy lines, and just when I was peeling. Sharks on a little bit of a comeback. It's all gone south, and it's a two-man disadvantage for them now. Oh, they were already in a position where they couldn't make any more mistakes, and just like that, oh. it's starting to disappear. Hopes, dreams, all on the shoulders of Pank here. This man has done so much work for Sharks tonight, but a one-on-four against Anonimo is not going to happen, and they are going to be travelling in through the lower bracket. Anonimo taking the series 2-1. to